I cut a 1 by 10 by 12 down into two pieces that were 26 and a half inches long and two pieces that were 14 and 3 quarters of an inch long. I'm going to be using my circular saw to cut this down so I'm going to make sure I'm clamping the wood to the table super 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 tight so it doesn't wiggle and another tip that I have is take your speed square and just clamp that down next to the wood to have a straight edge that way when you cut it with your saw you're not worried about like shifting around and wiggling it's going to stay straight for you. The smaller pieces are going to be my side pieces and the longer ones will be the top and the bottom. And of course we need to take a puppy break because just she's the cutest thing ever. When I assembled this together, I made sure that the smaller pieces were inside the top and bottom ones. And then to connect everything together, we're gonna use the Craig Jig, which I've used before on my channel. And I'll make sure another video with full detail of how to use this tool is available for you guys but you're just simply gonna adjust it to the thickness of your wood, put it on the edge and just drill a hole to make way for the pocket hole screws. Now that we have the pocket holes drilled on the side pieces on the top and the bottom of them, we're gonna move along to just using some wood glue and painter's tape to kind of hold the rectangle together as a substitution for longer clamps. I do not have those in my workshop quite yet, so that's why I'm using the painter's tape as a temporary hold, and I'm just gonna go in with my power drill and screw everything together like I've shown you guys before on my channel. Once that was all put together, my original idea was to cut two pieces of wood to go diagonally, creating an X to also create shelves for wine bottles. So that's what I did, and I didn't miter down the edges because I genuinely always mess that up. But I did make a mark down the center and use my jigsaw to cut it out and use my chisel to pop that piece of wood out because I thought that if I did that on both pieces of the X, they would shimmy together perfectly, but that is only for a square. Not a rectangle lesson learned then tried to make like a T for the center a cross for the center and my hammer broke so there was that broken half after my like 7,000 times to try it so I had these extra pieces of scrap plywood because I do not want to run back to Home Depot and kind of measure it out with those scrap pieces and I'm just gonna staple them into the sides definitely not what I planned by any means to say the least uh, this project after three days of working on it was getting on my nerves and I uh, I lost it just a little bit couple of things. I got a pimple in between my eyebrows. I'm using a mic so this looks a little wonky. I am going to be fixing these shelves behind me which I know there's gonna be a bunch of comments on. I'm going to do a decorate with me and kind of fix up my set. I'm gonna film it tomorrow so be sure to drop questions down below about any type of project you're working on, any DIY help, personal questions, whatever kind of question you want to ask. Be sure to drop it below because tomorrow I'm just gonna spend the day redecorating this beautiful set and just giving it some love because I haven't touched this thing in like three, two, three years. So the X that you saw me do wasn't going to work. My thought process on this whole thing, because our living room has so many natural textures and the mini bar that I am redoing is surrounded by like natural wood and I'm adding greens and stuff. I think I'm just gonna make like a macrame wine holder. I don't know. A lot of the times when I do DIYs, I'll film a full DIY and it will either go wrong 15 times and then I get sick of it and I won't finish it or I will show you my mistakes throughout the process and if I finished it, I also will share that with you. But I've never really shared how frustrated I get when a DIY just does not work. Um, I basically just want the wine to hold one, like one, two, three, four bottles. In my brain, if we're going to fit four, this is 26 and a half. We did one here, and then we do one, two, three, four. And then we do one, two, one, two, three, four. So I'm just gonna connect these to make sure everything is straight and good to, oh, good to go. Again, you guys, I have no clue this is gonna work. So now you have all your holes lining up and each of these is gonna be a holder for a wine bottle. So in total, we can hold four fingers crossed across this whole thing. What I wanna do now is measure what length of cord is going to work the best. And hopefully you can see this on this camera. So you're gonna shimmy the wine bottle in and you wanna be holding both. And that's why I kept one on the spool and one cut. Cause I know that this guy is gonna be a little heavy. Ooh, wait, this might be cute guys. And a mark here. Mark here, mark there, and mark there. You can remove the wine bottle, 
You wanna make sure it comes out pretty easily. And again, I am using a thicker wine bottle that I have left over. Now all you have to do is cut similar strips, which is super easy. I feel like this is gonna be really cool. I think for the next round, I'm gonna do a little layering. This is actually working out easier than expected. If I were to go right here, it would need to be in between these guys, which makes sense. Duh. So I just drilled holes in between like where the ropes are. I drilled the pair behind. And where these back ropes are, I drilled a pair in front of. And now what my hope is we're gonna make this long and then we'll actually measure the next one. You know how I do. It's literally just like a, a game of can we make this work? It should be a show on HDTV. All right, so moment of truth. Shimming this guy in. I think I need to lower him out in the back. Okay, does that look right? I actually think that looks good. And then my last one, I gotta think about what I wanna do. So I like where this is at. I'm gonna tape it and mark it and then cut the remaining strips like we did before. I'm sort of speechless at what to say in this stage, but for the last row, the one that is hanging the lowest, I just drilled holes in front of the original ones that we drilled and in back of the original ones that we did as well to create the lowest hanging rope that you see right there and it's not interfering with any of the other bottles. This is the most terrible sound. But basically, this is where we're at. Can hold four, eight, nine, 10, 11 bottles of wine, which we'll never have on hand. The holder will have more holes in the middle of the wood versus the outer edges because you're adding that middle layer for the three bottles of wine. Once you kind of figure out what kind of layering situation you wanna do, go ahead and stain and finish the wood at the color of your choice. After I let that dry overnight, I just went back in and placed the macrame cords in the correct holes and just tied knots as I went along to ensure the pieces were secure. I cut the excess off the knots and stepped back and realized that I was slowly running out of yarn, <laughs> so it looped up. But all in all, it works as a wine holder. If I like it, I'm still not sure. I do believe there are better options, but it's, uh, it's definitely unique. <laughs> I just wanted to keep it real with you guys. This literally is the process of most of my DIY projects and I am not hyped on this at all, but I did want to share the process that you should see a project through because it may turn out right, it may turn out wrong, but you only know if you try. I hope you had fun watching this video. I had a lot of fun and frustration making it, but I will catch you Wednesday for a legit DIY.